Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In section four of Being in Time, Heidegger proposes to us a project, and he calls this by several different names. One is fundamental ontology. Another that we're trying to clarify here is the existential analysis of Dasein. So we got, you know, one word in there that, that you're probably somewhat familiar with, analysis, although you may not be entirely sure about what it means in this context. It's a word that we, I think many people use without fully understanding. To analyze things is to break them down, to distinguish them into their parts, to carry out a sort of survey of how everything is connected with everything else. And Heidegger is doing an analysis in that sense. So what is an existential analysis in that case? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. And what's all this Dasein business? Dasein is the word that Heidegger uses to discuss human beings as a kind of being. This is what is really distinctive about us as human beings. A little bit later, he's going to say that in a way, Dasein is the closest thing to us, but it's also uh, quite far from us. So Dasein is not just me as Gregory Sadler standing here lecturing to you. Right now, you are also Dasein. This doesn't mean that it's some sort of, you know, airy, uh, you know, uh, very vague thing that's connecting us all together in one big mentality. No, you are Dasein, I am Dasein, and, and Dasein is different in you than it is in me, but there's still a fundamental similarity to our Dasein that allows us to recognize each other as the same sort of being. Dasein, Heidegger says, is the being for whom its own being can be in question or can be a matter of concern or care. Dasein is the being which in a certain way is connected to or even is in a certain sense all other beings. And I'm going to begin here by talking about a passage that he references coming from Aristotle. He says that, um, Aristotle had said the soul of the human being is in a certain way beings. And this was a very important uh, uh, notion that then was carried forth into medieval philosophy, as he says. And how is this interpreted? The soul, which constitutes the, the being of human being, which makes us what we are, uh, discovers in its ways to be, isthesis, perception, noesis, uh, understanding, intellection, however we want to say, all beings with regard to their thatness and whatness. That is to say, always also in their, their being. So we're different from other beings in that we do grasp beings out there within our field of whatever you want to call it, perception, conception, intellection. They are for us, but not solely for us. This is part of what it means to be humanly conscious. We're also self-conscious. We know ourselves to be beings in the midst of other beings. And we can be concerned about what kind of being are we in a way that, for example, the book or the chalkboard cannot. Now, that gives you a little bit about what Dasein is. What about the existential? So here we want to follow out a few distinctions that Heidegger is going to make here. Um, when we're talking about an analysis of Dasein, this is something that Dasein does in relation to itself. Dasein makes sense out of itself. Dasein is what engages in interpretations of beings. 
whether this be through purely ontic, that is sort of you know factual observ- observational. Uh, you know, uh, scientific disciplines, or whether this be in, in a more ontological way, uh, through what Heidegger is going to talk about as developing of regional ontologies, or whether this be through a more fundamental ontology. So Heidegger tells us that sciences can be understood uh, as, as a way in which we try to make sense out of reality. And what we do, in effect, as Dasein, is we look at part of being. And we take some being as the typical being to understand all the other ones, and we engage either in a purely ontic approach, like he says the positive sciences do, or we engage in a sort of regional ontology where we're trying to make sense of things. We're using basic concepts and maybe even calling them into question and refining them further. But we're not taking Dasein itself as our starting point. We're taking some other being, whether it be that of uh, the brain and neuroscience or of, um, you know, historical data in history, or that of uh, observations about anything that you like, you know, cells in biology or other, you know, processes that are not merely physical or chemical, but, but have life involved with them. We can go on and on and on with examples of this. Now, that is not the same thing as an existential analysis of Dasein. That is something that can be helpful the, the sciences and the other disciplines can give us interesting clues, can give us guiding uh, uh, you know, uh, ways to not go completely wrong with things if, if we're starting to speculate. But it doesn't actually tell us about the structures of existence for Dasein. So he says, ontologies which have beings unlike Dasein as their theme are accordingly founded and motivated in the ontic structure of Dasein itself. So we need to turn to that. And we go back a little bit further. He says that, that Dasein, in its, its ontic uh, nature, is uh, that it is ontological. It can be concerned with being as a whole, with other beings, with itself. And he says... Um, if we reserve the term ontology for the explicit theoretical question of the meaning of beings, then the intended ontological character of Dasein is to be designated as pre-ontological. Much of the time that we're engaged with being and beings, we're not doing ontology. That's something that we can add to it. We are already involved ontologically with those beings, but we have to make that what's implicit explicit. So he says, how can we do this? He says, we call the very being to which Dasein can relate in one way or another and somehow always does relate existence. Now, is this just one being in the sense of an entity? Like I've got this you know, uh, piece of chalk and I'm always relating myself to it. No, it's not like that. Nor is it even something like, say, my body. Instead, we should read being here in terms of the being of of beings. So existence is not something just that I have as sort of like a predicate. I exist. Existence is something that I almost swim in or uh, continually experience. All of this is my existence, not just this. All of this and this activity of creating something for you that you're watching is also part of my existence. And now it's part of yours as well. So existence means more than just having being. He goes on and he says, um, because the essential definition of this being cannot be accomplished by ascribing to it a what that specifies its material content and because its essence lies in the fact that it, it, in each instance, has to be its being as its own, the term Dasein is what we've chosen to talk about this. And he says, Dasein always understands itself in terms of its existence. 
goes on and says, in terms of its possibility to be itself or not be itself. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean a very explicit cognitive understanding that I'm formulating and thinking about all the time. But every action that I do, every emotion that I have, every way in which I move involves a kind of understanding on my part of my own existence, of me in relation to other beings. And I understand this not just in terms of an actuality, but in terms of possibilities. At every point in time, there's multiple possibilities for me, Heidegger would say. Now he goes on and he says, existence is decided only by each Dasein. How? In the manner of seizing upon or neglecting such possibilities. Sometimes we're not even aware of the possibilities that exist for us. Sometimes they are concealed, sometimes they are disparaged and thereby uh, never taken seriously. But there's all sorts of possibilities at every single moment for the Dasein that is me or, or you, all the way up to the time that we die. Now he goes on and he says, we come to terms with this question of existence always only through existence itself. We, we, this is an important point. We don't do it by trying to abstract existence away and becoming a transcendental subject or you know, stripping away all of our peculiarities and individualities. What's cool about this is that means that existential analysis of Dasein doesn't have to happen over at the fancy university or in some psychoanalytic institute or through some special you know, self-helpy group you know, where they're talking about Heidegger. No, it can happen for any one of us at any point. It can happen when we're in the army. It can happen when we're you know, scrubbing a toilet. It can happen when we're serving somebody dinner. It can happen when we're lying awake at night, <laughs> unable to sleep, thinking about the mess that we've made of our life. So he goes on and he says, here's the key distinction that you see represented here. Uh, we come to terms through this, uh, the question of existence, always through existence itself. We call this kind of understanding of itself existential. This is a different term than existential. Existential understanding. What does he mean to signify there? That this is an ontic affair, he says, of Dasein. This is not ontological. This is merely ontic. It has to do with their factual existence. And so... You know, what we're talking about here is going to be distinguished from this. So if I sit down and I think about the fact that I could have uh, remained in the military for, for life and be retired at this point and doing something different, or I could have uh, remained in the university and by now I would probably, you know, uh, be in administration, or I could have done this or I could have done that. All of those are really ontic, right? And they're, they're genuine possibilities, although maybe not as possible as I'd like to think, but they're not giving me the existential analysis of Dasein. So let's turn to that now. What gives us that? He says, um, the question of structure aims at the analysis of what constitutes existence. What is existence? Not just my existence right here, not just the possible existences I could have had, or the potential Gregs in the future. You know, I was just joking with my wife uh, uh, yesterday about how you know past Greg made extra work for me by not putting away the dishes that were in the sink the night before, and what a jerk he can be. Of course, I'm also past Greg, right? And we can talk, in our, uh, talk about ourselves in this way because Dasein has this, this structure of you know, reflexivity. We're not talking about that. We're talking about what constitutes existence as such for you, for me, for, for Dasein in general. Now, he also talks about the coherence of these structures of existence. And he says, we shall call this existentiality. And he says, its analysis does not have the character of an existential understanding, but rather an existential one, right? So we have a fundamentally different sort of 
uh, comportment here. He says, the task of an existential analysis of Dasein is prescribed with regard to its possibility and necessity in the ontic constitution of Dasein. That means that we always have to begin from ourselves, from where we actually are, the existence that we have, but we're going beyond that. We're transcending it in a certain way. So he goes on and he tells us that the, the sciences and disciplines are ways of being in which Dasein relates to beings that doesn't have to be. But being in a world belongs essentially to Dasein. And this tells us one of the key things that the ontological uh, you know, uh, dimension, the existential analysis of Dasein is going to focus upon, which is the world and my being in the world. We're going to analyze that. We're going to examine that. We're going to have to begin from where we actually are, but we don't want to remain just with the ontic, and we don't want to succumb to the lure of taking a, a science or discipline as our, our sort of um, guiding uh, structure to begin with. We want to see what the actual structures out there are that are deeper than these, these sciences or disciplines can reach. So... The other aspect of this that's going to be particularly important just to look a little bit ahead is going to be time or temporality. This is being and time, right? And Heidegger says that time has been, in some respects, misunderstood. It's something that we live in. It's something that we exist in. And so we can carry out an existential analysis of Dasein by looking at how Dasein is in time. What is the temporality of Dasein? Now, he finishes up by, by telling us that the roots of the existential analysis, for their part, are existential. They are ontic. So we're always grounded in the actual being that we have, the concrete, factual nature of who we are. But, as I pointed out, Heidegger thinks that we can transcend that without completely leaving it behind, without launching into something that is transcendental in the sense that it abstracts away from all of our actuality and particularity. We have, because we we're already sort of swimming in it, the capacity, as Dasein, through this analysis to figure out what constitutes existence, what the structures of existence are. And that is the task that he's setting himself in this work.